Hi all, Warren here from Toy Fishing. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. And in this episode, we'll be looking at how strong the Bimini Twist is in monofilament fishing line. If you're watching us for the first time, very welcome. And if you're wondering how strong this knot is, let's just say it's the strongest fishing knot I've ever tested on this machine right here. It really is on a different level. I'll show you every single tip and trick I learned during testing monofilament and how you can guarantee your Bimini twist is as strong as the Bimini twist we tied in this episode. subscriber you're probably wondering why I'm not showing you the results for braid and fluoro as per my regular show well let's just say I need to save my wrist from all that twisting and also I've learned so so much on monofilament alone I did not want to end up giving you a 30 minute video with all three line types and miss out on any important tips and tricks to help you maximize the strength of your Bimini twist Let's take a brief look at the setup first. There is a Bimini twist on the tensile tester. Due to the length of this knot, I tied it with a shortened loop, which is sitting on a five millimeter diameter bar at the bottom right here. On the other end, I've got a single strand monofilament line wrapped on our cylinder. Right, so what you're gonna notice here also, that is slightly different, is that the single line test sample, this bit right here, is shorter than normal, which I'll touch on later when we look at the results. Right, so let's take a look at a few sample tests as we normally do and see how this knot behaves in a test environment. This is 30 pound monofilament fishing line with an actual line strength of 41.76 pounds. I've tied the Bimini twist here with 25 twists. Can you believe that result? Look where the break is a couple of inches away from the actual fishing knot incredible strength almost as if it were just a piece of fishing line with no knot in it right let's take a look at the big guns 80 pound monofilament with an actual line strength of 106.05 pounds we use 30 reps here to achieve maximum strength right let's get the machine moving i wish you were here experiencing how loud this really is when it snaps wow not only was that loud, but you just saw 106 pounds of plastic snap nowhere near the fishing knot. Okay, let's get a 100 pounds monofilament on here. This will be impressive. You will also notice as the knot is put under load, you will see the fishing knot move. When you get these bigger lines with bigger twists and bigger outer barrel wraps and using 30 twists, there'll be a lot of fishing line length used within the knot so there will always be an ever increasing amount of movement as you move up the increasing diameters of the line right let's snap this thing see there that was some movement but it's just the inner twist stretching out and the monofilament actually elongating under load so as the larger diameter monofilament is stretched out the diameter of the line is also decreasing slightly as it elongates, hence you increase the chances of movement. But as you just saw here, the knot actually copes with the movement and not only that, but again, it broke off about two to three inches from the knot. And for an actual line strength of 128.27 pounds, the knot proved to be, well, stronger than the test sample of the main line. Take a look at the results. Just remember what I said earlier, with regards to the test sample length. It's shorter. Hope you enjoy. Don't forget to pause if you want to look at an individual result on its own for a bit longer.
So how good was that? It's definitely off the scale. In fact, it was so good, it superseded the actual line strength in a few categories. How is that even possible? Well, if you compare the test sample lengths of an ordinary line-to-line -line test, the specimen sample is approximately 750 millimeters long, and on a regular terminal knot test, the line's approximately 600 millimeters long. And on our Bimini twist, the single piece of line is approximately 400 millimeters long. There will be less defects or manufacturing imperfections in a shorter piece of line, hence the strength is slightly above 100% in some line categories. Basically, if you take a piece of line, let's say 10 meters long, well that's not 10, <laughs> but anyway, you get my point, for argument's sake, and count all the micro abrasions and defects in the line, and then do the same for a one meter piece of line, you will get less defects in the shorter piece. Therefore, if you tested two pieces of line, the shorter piece will in fact be potentially stronger as it's less likely to break due to it having less imperfections. Let's take a look at the overall results for this loop knot. 101.008%, well that is remarkable. For all intents and purposes, remembering what we just spoke about, a Bimini twist is in fact 100% knot strength. Incredible, that is a truly remarkable achievement. Now look, I know some of our terminal knots do get in the high 90s, including the toy knot, but they have that slight advantage. They tie to a fixed end, like a swivel or a hook, which actually assists the knot in a big way. This knot is truly impressive. It's essentially a knot within a piece of line, and it's 100% effective. If you look at the last mono to mono line to line World's Strongest Fishing Knot episode, you will see how these knots actually struggle to achieve an average in the low 80s on monofilament. So it's really, really remarkable. Right, tips and tricks. I must be honest here, I've tied this knot for a long time, but when I first started testing it, my knot, well, let's just say it was unsatisfactory. The performance was not up to par with some slipping and well off the 100% benchmark. So I'm hoping to teach you every single tip I learned how to tie a 100% Bimini twist in monofilament. Let's get started. Right, number one, twists and twist counts. For monofilament, anything up to and including 50 pound line, 25 initial twists are fine. Once you get over 80 pound line, the diameter start increasing and the pressures within the loading increase significantly. You will need to use 30 reps here to help avoid the knot from moving. Let's just take a look at my graphs for the 100 pound test results. You will see some of them have movement. This actually had no bearing on the final strength of the knot. You will also have seen the movement occur much later on when you get into the really, really high loads. Hopefully you can give me some license here as I go off on an engineering tangent. So how does the Bimini twist actually work? Well, its strength comes from how well the twists are constrained and bound together. So what is binding them together? Well, it's the outer barrel wraps on the knot. So look, when you tie a knot in say a hundred pound line, you will try and compact and constrain the twists as tightly as possible, then start the barrel wraps over the top of the twist. These are always done by hand and I do not know anyone that does their barrel wraps using a bar puller or the like on the outer barrel wrap. So if you're pulling a piece of 100 pound line against your skin in your fingers, the maximum you could apply pressure is about 30 or 40 pounds before either you cut yourself or hurt your hands. So now you put the knot under load either on a tensile tester or on a fish and you exceed this amount of load, the 30 or 40 pounds you tied the knot to. This is when things will start to happen like movement. Number two, lubrication. The amount of videos I've seen with people tying the Bimini twist with no lubrication. Let me just show you in this test sample, no lubrication. Well, that is really, really poor. The damage to this knot occurs in a very, very specific place. Get some spit on your fingers and get those twists lubricated. So we've all seen it many, many times and even in my video early on. Look at the knot breaks 
about one to six inches away from the knot, so it's 100% strong. I've lost count of the amount of times I've seen this done on a Bimini Twist video. Right, so does that mean it's 100% strong? Well, this is where I push back on that statement that's given in those videos. All it means is that you damage your line earlier on in the tying sequence, basically depending on how long and how many twists you did and the length of your desired Bimini loop, the damage to your Bimini occurred when you compacted your twists. Look here, let's compact my twists at the point of pushing the twists tightly together. Those twists generate an awful amount of heat and friction when you start to compact them down. The damage to the main line actually occurred here, but the knot is already three inches away from where I damaged it. For all intents and purposes, the damage is negligible because we've seen how strong the knot is, but it does explain why the knot fails where it does a few inches up. Number three, angle of the lines when you begin to tighten your twist. Try and keep the angle down to below 90 degrees as much as possible. I appreciate near the end it'll be really wide, but for the most part, keep it small. This will avoid an abrupt angle on the line when you tighten your twist. If you have a really big angle, the pinpoint force is much greater where the lines meet, and you'll end up concentrating the heat in a very specific area, and this will in turn damage the surface of the line well away from the knot, and you'll get the knot breaking one to six inches away from the knot. This is where lubrication and the angle of the two lines work hand in hand at preventing any damage to the standing end of the line. Basically, the first few inches of line exiting the knot, although the line still breaks above the knot, really made it difficult for me initially when I was testing the knot as it would break away from the knot, but the maximum load was down. Number four, the overhand knot is the weakest knot I know of and that I've tested so far. And funny enough, you've got two of these at the back end of this knot. The first one is critical in preventing the knot from unwinding. Just make sure these are not jerked too hard or tightened without any lubrication. The forces here can easily generate heat and the line and you can find the back of your bimini coming undone due to the heat damage on a tight wrap. And number five, so I'm hoping you've seen my how-to video for the bimini twist knot where I finished the knot with three turns on what looks like a clinch knot. The trick I learned here was as you tighten the knot, just hold all three lines together then pull the knot tight. It'll help the loop link up easily and stop them from folding over and causing a bit of mess. And number six, this is hopefully the last point. I like to test and check a lot of techniques that I've seen that other people suggest in their videos. One detail I've seen in a few videos is this. At the point of jumping the line, basically taking the line from the twists and starting the barrel wraps, they suggest to do a few wraps with some space between the barrel wraps, then begin tight barrel wraps. Well, let's just say I've tested this idea and in my opinion, it's complete and utter garbage. Just a reminder here, the Bimini twist relies on the twists being compacted and held together as tightly as possible, as soon as possible at the front end and the twists take the brunt of the load. By allowing the first few twists a little leg room on the drive to the airport, they can really stretch out, increasing movement at a really early stage, and in fact cause the knot to break, well, right, number seven. One more point. This is a twist and this is a wrap. Know what the difference between the two things are, especially for this knot. It's called a Bimini twist. When you compact the twist together, especially on thicker lines, or sometimes if you jump the line and some of the twists turn into wraps, this should set off alarm bells. Stop tying and start again. You need to compact a twisted line with barrel wraps. If you try and compact a wrapped line or a partly wrapped line with barrel wraps, you will run into trouble very early on. 
This is probably the biggest failure I've seen in testing with this knob. If there's a hint of a wrap in the initial line, especially at the beginning, that was twisted and compacted, you need to start over. You could try and unwind, but you will have the front section of the twist being at a different angle and tightness to the rest of the twist on the back end, depending on how far you unwound. So that's it, the 100% strong Bimini twist in monofilament. Remarkable, really. Still cannot believe how strong it is. There are many areas you can get this knot wrong, but if you know what to look out for, you will have years of success tying this knot. And if you've watched this and still thinking, no, it's still not worth the effort, I would urge you just to try and tie it a few times. Use the third hand trick. This knot is really, really strong. It's the strongest thing I've ever seen, and it really is worth learning how to tie. Tight lines, thanks for watching this episode of the World's Strongest Fishing Knot. And what a cracker it was. I mean, you've got to give it a go. It's um, it's just one of those knots that, yeah, it's kind of difficult, especially when you're starting out tying it. But once you've got the knack of it, third hand trick, I mean, it's, it's quite breezy, really easy to tie. Um, I mean, some guys do it in like under 30 seconds. I mean, I'm not quite sure how good those knots would be. But, um, yeah, I mean... If you if you uh, <clears throat> if you want to get competent at tying it, I would say sort of the two minute mark would be good, two or three minutes. Um, I mean that, that that's a good time to make sure your twists are right, you've got the right amount of wraps, and you've made a good effort on jumping that line and making sure it jumps at a twist to a to a wrap. It's really really important. Keep the barrel wraps really tight as well. Um, I know I've mentioned that above, kind of waffling it a bit do this now and again on some of these episodes. Um, but yeah, it's it's it really, really is 100% strong. I mean, it, it's phenomenal actually. You've got, like I said earlier, you, you've you got all these other line-to-line -line knots we've tested on monofilament. You're talking like low 80s, like this knot is 20% better. I mean, that's, that's a big jump. It's really, a, really a big jump, um, especially for a line-to-line -line knot. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, yeah, looking forward to the next episode. Not sure what I'm going to be doing. Um, off on a trip soon as well, so maybe some of that. Anyway, tight lines. See you guys and girls later. Grab a brew. Forgot to mention the brew tonight. Get a brew and maybe watch a couple of more episodes of something else I've done. That would be great. And see you, man. Cheers.